lorry comes in and these are just transported straight onto the onto the lorry and off it goes. Easy so yes, raw material in, finished part sent straight out, exactly. even palletised. Welcome to MTD CNC. Now today we're going to be talking about a turnkey solution provided by ETG to Mollark Cox. Now this is a Nakamura Tomy with a robo job. So Steve, can you tell me quickly just about the, the part, the process? So basically the, the inquiry started, it was a customer-led component. Um, so we started off not talking about any form of Shall automation. Shall the component now? Yeah, not talking about any, any machine tool. Um, we simply had this, this component. Um, they had some teething issues um, in-house, um, one with saw control uh, and, and two with a ramp up in quantity that they needed to produce. So it's quite a simple part, you've got kind of two operations probably, it's, uh, you've got OD grooves, you've got like a little face groove and then a big bore. Yep. And I can see how you get swarf uh, build up here because obviously aluminium is quite hard to get it to chip, it does get stringy swarf quite a lot. So how did you solve that problem? So yeah, as you, as you touched on Ron, really swingish, particularly when we get into these boring features in there. So the U-drill came in, no issues. When we're necking out all this material here, we were getting a real bundle of swarf. Um, so basically on the Nakamura, we've got some oscillation software. Let's go and have a quick look at the Nakamura as well. So the oscillation software, how does that work? So basically how that does it, it manages the, um, the RPM of the spindle. Um, so as it, as it, as it denotes the, the load that it's being put through the machine tool, it fluctuates the RPM. You, you physically can't see it. You can't see it on the screen. It's something that it does in the, in the, in the so background. So then you're breaking down all the swarf. So then it's taking those big elements of swarf and just breaking that up. Brilliant. Yeah. So let's talk about the actual Nakamura that you spec'd out for this job. Now this has got, I mean look at it, it's got two turrets, two spindles. It's a pretty hefty machine. Correct. So this is our 150 range, so 65 mil through the, through the main bore. The reason we chose this machine is, is, is basically it's got the vers versatility of speed and accuracy. Um, but also it's got the power in there because as we started looking at we, these parts we're only looking at aluminium um, but because we introduced the, the robot cell into it it gave the customer extra capacity um, so obviously he can start to put on the more, the more difficult materials through this, through this same system it's not limited then of what he can put through the so cell So it's a hefty machine, you don't just do aluminium you can do lots of different materials but with the automation system you're making the best use of those twin turrets because before, what was the operation that they were doing before with a twin turret? Um, it is a, it's a very manual, manual orientated part. So the operator would load uh, the raw bullet into the spindle. Go on, one. get inside there. Have a quick look at that twin turret, Chris. Go on. They'd have to load into that uh, into the uh, into the left hand spindle. They'd have a build up of swarf then. So that then they'd have to open the doors up, clear that swarf around spindle one, shut the doors with transfer overs onto the onto the sub spindle. Again, before he come back in to remove the part, he's got more swarf to remove. Yeah, I mean, look inside there. You can imagine that with all of these, these parts that you're making, all the swarf that's coming off, the, the amount of material you're taking off. I mean, you can imagine how it gets stuck inside there because it's quite a tight space to fit two, two spindles, two turrets. I mean, yeah, it's well compact. We've got, the, we've got the beauty of high pressure coolant. So with the oscillation software, high pressure coolant, it basically ticks all, ticks all the boxes for, for swarf management. Brilliant. So let's move on to the robo job that you've got set up. Now this is a, a, a robot cell. We're allowed to walk in because yeah. you've got kind of the laser, yeah, the laser not, system. Take that, your head off. Yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna get done in here. So we've got how many billets can we fit on here? I mean, we've got at least five, five high by four by. I don't I know. Think by, it's about by 100 seven. And, 160 that we so can. It's, it's a lot of billets you can of, fit yeah, in a really fully, small space, which is up. amazing. And these take different diameters. These are quite. It's, it's a versatile system. It's not just for a single part. It's a very intuitive system. So th this. This unit here, you don't need any robotic experience whatsoever. It asks the operator all of the questions. What yeah, so size of material? We have a little screen back there that shows you how to yeah, how so to it, use it, the it system. It dictates to the the operator what to do. So you plug in the figures of the size of the material, and basically you have to you have to ergonomate, move these pins around on the on the on the table, um, and set the soft jaws to the different diameters as well on the, on the end yeah, effectors again, of the robot. Uh, you're right. So on there, they've got measurements of, of, of the size of the billet that move those jaws out. So yeah, it's quite up up and running. You can be up and running on your next part within 10, 10 15 minutes. Which is obviously is a real key uh, driver for for um, automation adoption with SMEs who don't have. 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 off orders. They might have 500 off, 200 off. Yeah, correct. and that's where that's kind of the slight. That's where it's slightly maybe it's not quite uh, viable enough to adopt an automation system like this, and unless you can change over parts quickly. Yeah, well, as well, even if you've if you've got long running parts, 
you talk about everyone dictates when you talk about automation think I need to rack it up with loads but even if you've got a part that's going to run for half an hour you know you load up 10 10 20 parts you, you know you're getting a few hours run time so out someone of the can go walk free. on run on another manual machine yeah. or a different machine or we can load it up at the end of the shift go home and it's still running for the duration of the duration of the night exactly um, weekend running yeah we've got the flexibility there the pallet behind you yeah so uh, this loads from a like a, a fixed kind of located billet system onto yeah. what is essentially totally unlocated pallet system which is is located by these very well-worn bits of tape here so it's it's fantastic that you don't need an extra piece of hardware to, to load into. Correct. And so you can just pick this up with a fork truck and yeah, you take it away. We, we looked at the full process. Initially, we was loading, we was taking raw billets here and loading back the finished parts. So we originally we had all raw billets stacked up and these were replaced by finished parts. It, then it needed someone to take all these finished parts and put them onto a pallet. Well, why not why do that when you've got a robot yeah, that can access let, the pallet? Let the robot put onto the pallets there. So these basically, you can see the roller shutter doors. Lorry comes in, and these are just transported straight onto the onto the lorry, and, and, and off it off it goes. Easy so as raw 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 material in, finished part sent straight out, exactly. even palletized. Exactly, and that and that is our main focus as a as a, as a cell. You, you, first of all, we look at a component, and what does the operator, uh, what does the customer need? We ask the customer what are the flaws in this component for you, and then all the time we're, we're talking about automation, they're always asking what other processes have you got within the cell. There's elements that we might start introducing, um, such as washing the component, deburring for the for the other parts that so we're So you have deburring stations, washing stations. Yeah. Brilliant. So if you're looking for to, to adopt some kind of new automation system, maybe have a look at the robo job from ETG. They can do turnkey solutions. They Correct. can do any kind of solution you need. And put it on a fantastic Nakamura Tomo lathe. That sounds like the right kind of solution to me. If you're interested in more automation, make sure you um, subscribe to MTD CNC. Tell us what you think of the robo job in the comments below.